Okay, so let's try to understand the promises for the Node.js. Okay, how uh, the event loop is solving the issue and in what different ways we can implement the promises. So different between the sync and sync API. So if you talk about the event loop, event loop is a sync API, yes. Uh, sync API, no. So return value will be returned immediately after the function call. Return with the callback function, right? What is the difference between sync API? Return immediately after the function call. So like you are doing addition operations or something, you are passing the argument and returning the data. So it is returning the data immediately after the uh, after the execution. The, all the pure functions in JavaScript are actually sync API. Return with some callback function. I mean, it might be doing some kind of a call. Uh, sync API performance is high, performance is low. Programming is easy for the sync API, programming is hard. So usage scenario, so async API mostly we will be using for the server side scripting like in the node. So when you use a node.js API here in the, mo no in the most of the node.js cases you will see the callback associated with the particular task. Like here we are reading the file and we attach a callback. So we are saying that once this is done, uh, it will execute the code written inside it. So always use async API on server side scripting instead of uh, writing a uh, writing a funky code always check errors first in the async callback right so this is this is how what we are writing so always check an error so whenever you are writing a callback this is just a best practice for the node.js first argument should be the error object and another argument is a response object so first check for the error condition if error condition is there then return it otherwise uh, deal with the response object so here you can see that process error I'm firing so if it is returning error object then I'm returning this otherwise I'm returning false so this method I'm calling it here so but nested callbacks are harmful if you have a single callback dealing with some kind of asynchronous operation that is cool no issues with that but whenever you have multiple nested callbacks inside it you are getting some data from the first callback then you are again uh, dealing with the, uh, talking to the same data doing some kind of a loop and again calling the another API inside that loop so obviously it will be a callback hell right and it is harmful for the programming so uh, for how uh, we are avoiding the nested callbacks by separating the functions this is the first approach this is uh, what you can do otherwise you can uh, you can use uh, the promises to avoid the nested callbacks this is another way so we'll be talking about the promises here promises is just an proxy for the value uh, so promises and proxy object representing the asynchronous operations and value of that is not known initially it is being returned as a promise object because it's a asynchronous operation this let asynchronous methods to return a value like synchronous methods instead of a final value so the, these are initially returning the promise object instant, instantly and now uh, you will be able to do a dot then only when this promise is resolved or rejected so using if you are returning a promise from that operation it is it is providing you the capability to return or behave the function same as a synchronous function but uh, after getting the data it is checking a lot of things uh, like what is the state of the promise if it is rejected if it is resolved so it has a different different callbacks which will get executed based on the state of the promise okay so here we are calling this promise function if it is resolved then we are doing a dot then on fulfilled we are again returning another promise uh, firing another promise and then we are checking if it is uh, resolved then execute the code in dot then so promise API uh, is already there in the ES6 and same thing you can use in the node. You just need to fire this call new promise and this is the function having resolved and reject. So it, you can, you, using this uh, you can reject the promise object either in the resolved state or rejected state. Promise dot then on fulfilled or on rejected. Once you got the promise object you can do a dot then method and uh, it is having a two callback or you can do a dot catch on the promise object directly to handle the errors okay so promise apis and all these things promise dot all promise dot reject promise dot resolve we have already gone through all these things this is the promise which is doing nothing but resolving and passing this one two three four data so obviously it will execute this first callback and it will give you the data 
so p1 so this is how we are doing a promise chaining we are receiving the first promise p1 then we are firing a dot then returning a second promise then we are firing a dot then returning a third promise okay so how how it is working let's talk about this p1 is resolved after 2 seconds okay then p2 returns a base value which is treated as resolved it is returning some data so this is considered as a resolved promise second promise now third promise is rejected so third promise is rejected here dot then so fourth occurrence p4 is now skipped because p3 returning the rejected but p4 is now p5 any rejected value will fall to the next nearest on the reject callback so p4 is skipped because p3 p3 is rejected okay so p4 we have skipped now p5 uh, because p4 is rejected so obviously it will fall into the catch block uh, any rejected values will fall to the next nearest uh, on reject or catch block so this catch block is getting executed so this is how it is working so if you are doing a dollar promise dot all or if any of them is failed to execute then obviously this catch block will execute but whenever you are doing a chaining you can do it like this if any of the handler is throwing the reject then next occurrence will obviously will get skipped because that uh, the first promise is not resolved so the second promise using dot then handler will not be able to execute so p5 returning on dot catch is resolved value so it is passing the p6 okay these are the again the p6 so p5 is being returned on the successful execution of dot catch block so it is again returning the resolved promise so you might you might feel that what is happening here p5 returning on dot catch block is resolved value so it is passed to p6 so rewrite the same function with the promises this is the same function where you are returning the callback right so if the if every if you are not having any error then you are returning this callback with the null as a error object because you are not getting any error and you are sending this result object the so same thing uh, you can return using the promises instead of callback function this is a sync block and here you are returning the new promise function on resolved on reject so if you are getting any error from that call then obviously you need to reject it otherwise resolve it and return the result then you are not writing this callback situations and getting this you are you will be just writing you will be calling this function and you will be writing dot then and you will be getting the result object in the first callback first uh, uh, you can see first uh, first handler there are two handlers right successful handler and error handler so in the first uh, first uh, first callback first function which is successful handler will you will get the result object so the same thing which is returned using callback is now changed to using the promises so you can compare that which is awesome and which is more convenient so now no need to pass the callback as an argument no need to return as an no need to return as a callback function you are just right you are just creating the new promise object and returning the promise object only either in resolved state or in rejected state right so invoke the resolve with the result with the sequence succeed in invoke the re reject with error region when fail like this reject and resolve so now a lot of things are easier now if you start writing uh, the promises instead of nested callback or single callback is okay you are calling the function returning the callback that is okay so reduce the nested callback obviously whenever you are writing the nested callbacks obviously you should try to move that to the chainable callbacks using the promises so this is the final version this is the synchronous dot then handler 1 handler 2 handler 3 that's all about the promises uh, we have talked a lot of about the promises now let's see some examples from the angular and es6 thanks everyone